Now I've opened up the base file for this video and it contains a light setup and a camera. Let's get started on our shape key morph by adding in a cylinder and making sure it's about four meters tall. Now let's go into front view with numpad one, into edit mode with tab and move our cylinder up until it aligns with the X axis. So the origin is at the bottom of our cylinder. Now let's right click our cylinder and hit shade smooth. And let's go into the object data properties and enable auto smooth. Tab back into edit mode and let's go into edge select and hit control R to add in some loop cuts. Now I'm gonna add in six so we can just type in the number six. Now hit enter and escape to confirm your loop cut. Tap out of edit mode and let's look at our shape keys here. Now first of all let's add in a single shape key which will be the basis or the cylinder shape. Now let's add another shape key and with this one selected I will showcase how shape keys work. Let's just select an edge, scale it up and now tap out of edit mode. Now you will see the regular cylinder again and we can use this shape key here to actually morph between the base shape and the new shape key that we created just now. All right, so let's delete this shape key, add a new one. Let's call this one tree and we'll start working on creating our tree object here. So let's go into wireframe here. I'm gonna solo the object with forward slash and let's take the top edge here, which we select with shift alt and I'm gonna enable proportional editing and set it to root. Now, if I scale the top, down almost all the way to zero and i want to make sure that the bottom face loop is not selected so it doesn't affect the bottom face loop now we can just select these edges here hit g twice to edge slide make sure we disable proportional editing beforehand so double tab g and just slide this one down all the way to the bottom just right above the edge below it now let's just evenly spread all of these out like so and let's take this first one here and scale it inward now let's take the one above that Pull it down with G and Z and scale it outward. Now this technique will form the base of our tree. So let's just repeat these steps. I'm gonna pull this one down, uh, select another one, maybe scale it outward first and then pull it down, align it. Select all of these edges right here, maybe move them up. And I wanna get an even spread, making the sections go from small to big top to bottom. Now I'm going to go into face select and shift alt click the face loop at the bottom here and now S to scale and shift Z to exclude these Z axes and we'll scale this in to form our tree trunk. Now let's add in two modifiers to our object here. The first one being a bevel and we're going to set the segments to three and leave everything as default and the second one being the subdivision surface, which will enable adaptive subdivision. Now this is a experimental cycles feature. So in the experimental feature set, and uh, it will work if you just use EV. So no adaptive subdivision, just use a regular subdivision then. But for displacement purposes, I am using the experimental feature set and a adaptive subdivision. All right, so let's tap out of edit mode and you will see we get this nicely beveled cylinder shape. And if we go into the shape key and now increase the value, we will morph between our cylinder and our Christmas tree. All right, so let's get started on our fun little animation now. But before that, a short word from our sponsor. So to animate our object, hover over the value of our shape key at frame 30 and hit I. Go to frame 50, increase the value to 1 and hit I again. Now I'm going to take my cylinder, move to frame 0 and take it out of the camera's view. So G and X and pull it outside of the camera like so. Hit I and give it a location keyframe. Now go over to frame 30 and reset the X location to 0. Hit I again and we will now have the animation of it moving in camera. Now moving over to something like frame 110 or so, hit I again and add another location keyframe and just add another 30 frames or so and pull it out of our camera's view on the other side like so and add another keyframe. Select all of the keyframes in your timeline and hit Ctrl E to ease them in and ease out. This will create a nice smooth motion and we will also hit T and add a cubic interpolation. This will give a very sped up and slowing down motion, making everything look nice and smooth. Now it does look good, but I want some secondary motion to add some extra liveliness. And we'll do this by adding some rotation. So on the first frame here, I'm gonna set the Y rotation to minus three, pulling it back, making it seem like it's going very fast. Add in the keyframe and make sure to go to frame 
30 and add in one full rotation so 360 degrees on the Z rotation. Move over to the next keyframe, remove the Y rotation and add in two more full circles so 1080 on the Z rotation on the 50th frame. Now this addition really gives it some life and adds to the fun of the animation. Next up let's work on our particles. The particles, or in this case the shavings, are there to mimic the look of uh, the object being milled into a different shape. So first of all, let's add in a plane which will catch our particles. Let's name it ground or something, move it into the animation collection. And we are going to add in a collision physics object here and set the stickiness to 1 and the damping to 0.25. Next, let's take our cylinder object and add a particle system. All right, so if we just play this back now, it will emit particles all along the way and we don't want that. So let's tweak some settings here. Let's start a particle animation at frame 35 and end it at frame 45. In this time, I will emit 100 particles, which will be plenty for this animation. And I'm going to give it a lifetime of 150, which should be plenty as well. Now let's move on over to the velocity here and decrease the normal velocity to something like a 0.5 and set the object velocity to something like a 0.25. Now this should enable the particles to get rotation values and velocity from the rotation of our tree object. Let's enable rotation as well and fully randomize that. And let's play this back and see how it looks. Now I think this looks pretty good. The particles are flowing outward and they are getting pushed out by the momentum of our object, but just a bit too far. So let's add in some drag and some damp, basically 0.1 in each, just to make sure that the particles don't away too far now at a certain point basically somewhere around frame 65 or so i want to blow away all of these particles these shavings if you will and make them go off screen again so let's add in a wind force rotate it on the x-axis minus 90 and just pull it back so we can see it this doesn't affect how the wind works it's just for the visual representation now on frame 65 let's make sure to keyframe the strength of our wind force to about 40 and let's head one frame over to the left and set it to zero, basically making the wind active or not active at all. Now, this means from frame 65 and onward, the wind will blow the particles away. Now, I do want to move these keyframes over a little bit, so I'm going to move them over to about 70, just starting the wind a little bit later. Now, we want to change the render type from halo to object, but before we do that, let's create the actual object we are going to use. To create our object, we need to enable an add-on. So let's go into preferences, into add-ons and type in extra. Here, make sure to enable both the extra curves and extra mesh objects. All right, after which we can now go into the curve menu with shift A and add in a curly curve. This is how the curly curve looks, which will just extrude in the curve object properties. Now, after the extrusion, let's go into the object menu and convert our curve into a mesh. Now let's add in a solidify modifier and we're good to go with the shavings. I am going to scale these down so S and X and just pull them in and move them downward so we won't actually see them in the final render. Let's head back to our particle system here and over to the render tab again and set our render as to object. For the object obviously we'll choose the curly curve and we will just adjust the scale to something like a 0.35 and the scale randomness to 0.6 or so. This will generate some nice looking shavings. Of course, not exactly photorealistic, but good enough for this type of animation. They are falling down as you can tell, and at a certain point they get blown away off screen, allowing us for a completely perfect loop. Now next up obviously is the star at the top of our tree. And this is why I told you to enable the extra mesh objects as well. So let's Hit shift A, go over to the mesh and find the extras there and add the simple star. Now leave everything as is. Let's go and rotate our star on the X axis, I believe, or minus 90 and also our Y 18. This is a very specific number, but this will make it look good. Finally, let's move it up, scale it down, rotate it on the Z axis as well. So our Z and rotate it 45 degrees to line up with our camera nicely and put it on top of our tree. For animation purposes, I want to move the origin point at the bottom of our star. So tap into edit mode G and Z and pull the entire star up to align the origin at the bottom. Now align the star again with the top of our tree and add in a bevel modifier. Give it three segments, right click it and hit shade smooth. Now let's animate our star appearing at the top of our tree. So at frame 95 or so, I'm going to add in a skill 
keyframe. And now I wanna move over, I think about 10 frames to the left. So that's frame 85 for now. And let's add another skill keyframe here. So S0 to completely hide it. And I add in a scale keyframe. Now I am going to move these frames over as well to something like 95 to 105. I want to now select both of these keyframes, hit Ctrl E to ease them in and ease out, and hit T to set a cubic interpolation as well. Head over to the last keyframe and set the Z rotation to 360. And on the first keyframe of these two, let's set it back to zero and hit I again, creating a nice transition of our star coming into play here. Now repeat the um, ease in and ease out steps with Ctrl E and the cubic step with T to actually do the same for the rotation values. All right, so this wraps up the animation part and you can compare your version to mine and it should look something like this at this point in the video. So the uh, cylinder moves in, it rotates, it has the lively rotation, the particles come out while it's rotating, they get blown away and eventually the star pops in and the tree moves away. Now as you can tell, the star is not following along with our tree and that's because they are not parented together. So select our star and select the tree next and make sure to hit Control P and parent it to object. Now our star should move along nicely with our tree and everything is working as intended. Now I want to set the end and start points of our animation where the tree is entering and leaving the camera. So I'm going to look where that's happening and make sure that the start frame is set to that and the end frame is set to that point as well, which will allow for the fastest loop possible. Now let's head over to shading and this is where it all really comes together. I'm gonna add a new material for the ground plane here. I'm gonna call it ground as well. Give it a red base color and leave everything else default. Now select our cylinder here and add in the pre-installed toy tree wood shader. It comes with the base file, so make sure you download that one. This is a procedural wood shader, which is important because during the morph of our object, the UVs do change. And this is why a procedural shader will make sure that no strange artifacting is happening. Next, select our curly curve and add in the wood shavings material which is just the same material but without any of the stuff we are about to uh, add to our tree shader all right so in the shading workspace let's work on our tree shader i'm going to add in a mix shader to the existing shader that's in there i'm going to add in another principled bsdf and plug that into the bottom of our mix shader this will effectively give us a toggle between two different materials and the bottom material the new principled shader will be the paint layer so I'm going to set the roughness to 0.25 and the base color to a nicely mid-green color. Now I'm just going to add in some bump. So add in a bump node, plug it into the normal, add a noise texture, plug that into the height of our bump and control T to get these mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Set it to object and I'm going to set the scale here to something like a 0.15, detail to something like a 5 or a 6, detail roughness to something like a 0.8. Eight, and finally set the bump strength to something like a 0.05. This will give us a nice bumpy, but also reflective paint layer. Next, you want to create a mask. And as done before, let's use a gradient texture and a color ramp to do so. Plug the gradient texture into the color ramp and plug the color ramp into the factor of our mix shader. Hit Ctrl T with the gradient texture selected. And as always, to make sure this works, go into preferences, into add-ons, and make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Change the texture coordinates to object and set the color ramp to constant. Now set the white point somewhere in the middle of the color ramp and I will show you why. Change the Y rotation to 90 and if I now go into front view here you will see this is sort of working. However, we have no control over the exact point uh, and can't move the texture away. Instead, we have to use the mapping node to do so. By changing the X location, we have control over where the two textures meet. So let's open up a timeline window to be able to animate this factor here. All right, so around frame 75, let's set the X location to minus 3.8 and hit I. Now move over 20 frames to about 95 and set the X location till the paint layer lines up where you want it and hit I again. Select all the keyframes, control E to ease in and ease out and hit T for the cubic interpolation again. Now, as you can see in this very slow preview, the paint layer is adding to our tree creating the look we were going for. We want to make sure our subdivision surface modifier is actually at the bottom here, so the adaptive subdivision still works because we are going to add some displacement. So add in a displacement node and plug it into the displacement of the material output. Take our color ramp color and plug it into the height of our displacement. Set the mid level to zero, so there's no strange artifacting going on. 
and decrease the scale to a very, very low number, something like a 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.05, something around that number. And now if I zoom in, you will see the paint layer has become thicker than the rest of our tree, creating a nice thick coat of paint. All right, so next up, we want to shade our star. So select the star, add a new material, and let's call this one star. Head on over to the shading tab and hit the period earth key to center our nodes here. Add a layer weight node and a math node and plug in the layer weight facing into the top value of our math node. Plug the math node into our emission strength and set the emission color to some orange color. Set the base color to an orange color as well. Change the math type to multiply. Multiply the light source by about 250 or so and you will get a nice shaded light source looking like a plastic lamp in this case. Just a toy like look which I like for this video. Now this nearly wraps up everything we need to do and the final step is just a basic compositing layer. So I'm going to render out a single image, take it into compositing, enable use nodes and now I'm going to add in a glare node, set it to fog glow, set the strength to about 7 and the quality to high, giving our star a nice bloom effect and wrapping everything up. By now rendering your animation, you should get something similar to this. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it. If you did, then please leave a like, subscribe or comment down below. I want to point out that I just launched my Patreon page. And if you want to support the channel, then please consider becoming a patron. It really helps me out and it makes sure I can keep doing this in the future. I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas, safe holidays, and I hope to see you in the next one.